Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 97 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I'm a little proud of myself, because I made some fanciness. Let's check out our basement nuclear reactor room. So off camera a little bit, I decided to play around, um, and fancy up the reactor room. How do you guys like it? I am quite pleased, actually. I think it looks rather nice. Uh, basic structure is that I used marble for the walls uh, and the particular type of marble I used was the marble panel uh, and then along the top we used marble pillars that make it look fancy and then I used factory blocks with the big fan format so uh, these are factory blocks and then you just chisel them into factory fans the massive fan one uh, and a three by three of that makes a nice looking fan uh, and then I just used small tiles of marble for the elevator floor Nothing too crazy. Glowstone chiseled into fancy looking. I think it looks nice. I'm quite proud of it. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I think it looks pretty fancy. So that's my reactor room. Just made it look a little different. Um, you know me. I don't do very good with decorative stuff, so this took me like half an hour just derping around. So I figured rather than make a 30-minute episode of me derping around with different, you know, designs, I would do it off camera and let you guys see what it looks like at the end. So... That's all. Use uh, the Rod of Shifting Crust to take care of swapping items in and out while I was trying to figure out what looked good. Uh, and then, you know, that was about it. Uh, so the next thing I want to do, now that we've got this room looking nice, uh, is make a fluid solid canning machine. Boom. That's what we want. I pre-crafted those items. I was thinking ahead. Uh, and then we're going to want some power cables, and we're also going to want our transformers. And we're basically going to pop you down, hook you up with transformers so that you don't explode when I do this. And we've got power. Beautiful. Uh, now I'm pretty sure this is the mode we want to be in, canning. See? Uranium plus that equals that. So, so, so what we want to do is get... Uranium fuel cells. Um, last episode, I wrapped up saying I was going to craft all the stuff for my nuclear reactor and put it in there, and I did. So it's all in there. You can see it. It's looking beautiful. Uh, we've got all this stuff. If you want to, like, pause the video and screenshot it or whatever, uh, hopefully this thing, you know, works and uh, isn't a big problem. It should be fine. should be. should be fine. I would expect it to be fine. Um, that's cool. Now, the other thing we can do if we want to protect any potential for giant explosions uh, would be to put some kind of reinforced stone around it. So reinforced stone isn't too bad. Uh, what we have to do is get construction foam uh, and put it in a reinforced iron scaffolding, if I remember correctly. Uh, so to get that, we're going to need foam spray. Uh, so we're going to need a CF sprayer, and we're going to have to get construction foam. And there's a way to get construction foam. Of course, it's not showing up too well in JEI. But I think, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's stone inside this thing. Stone dust. If I'm not mistaken. We're going to have to figure that out to be sure if I'm right. Um... So let's 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 give that a try. Actually, let's get a CF foam sprayer, which is just iron casings times three. Good. CF foam sprayer empty. Cool. Now I think I can stick you in there, and then we get some stone dust. I'm going to disable this export on the east. Am I wrong about this? CF powder. I was close. This is what we need to make CF powder. Let's get about eight of them. Hey, that's working. Beautiful. Do we have overclockers? We do have some overclockers. Nice. Speed that up. Nice. 1,000 millibuckets, 2,000 millibuckets, 3,000 millibuckets, 4,000 millibuckets. I don't know how much this sprayer thing can hold. I'm hoping it's around 8,000. Can probably maybe hold more, but I don't know. 
Hey, where did uh, where the where the where the sprayer go? Do what now? <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> did it just get destroyed? That one was weird. What uh, what just happened there? Oh, you know what? It might have been. Yeah, it was probably sucked in by my import bus. It probably finished filling, and then because it finished filling, it moved to the right side here, and then import bus into the system. That's what happened. So eight millibuckets is the correct amount, so that's cool. Uh, and then scaffolding. We want iron scaffolding from Industrial Craft, which is a little bit harder than it looks. Wow, really? At least we get 16 for that. So let's get some iron plates. And an extruder mode. Yeah, this thing is choking a little bit on power. Let's borrow you for a minute. My power situation is not great, hence the need for a nuclear reactor. Um, keeping up with the processing of uh, uranium down there um, has drawn more power than I'm producing at the moment. So. I'm probably going to leave this energy crystal out here so that we no longer send power downstairs. Maybe we will a little bit, but you know what I could probably do if I wanted to be smart? Is just disable the exporting. So we probably have processed enough uranium for a while now. So I'm going to disable this exporter. And that should, uh, you know, clean up this backlog. I'll even take this uranium out of here so that at the very least this will kind of clean up the backlog of stuff. Whoosh. Okay. So you did your thing. I should be able to get scaffolding now. Yay. 32. Perfect. And if I need more, I'll get more later. So the gist of how this works, if I'm not mistaken, we're also going to want some sand. Handy. We can left click on the base here to kind of build upwards some. And we can hit this with the CF sprayer. It used up, looks like 900 millibuckets worth. So I guess 100 millibuckets per block, which is kind of cool. And then we just let it sit and dry. Or if we were impatient, we could right click with sand and that rapidly dries it. Neat, that's cool. Uh, breaking it takes a little bit of time. So you're probably best served to actually do the iron scaffolding where you want the actual reinforced stone to be. Uh, and what this does is it has a really strong blast resistance that helps protect against explosions. Obsidian obviously has a good blast resistance, but IC2 reactions or explosions don't care so much about obsidian's protection. Um, so for this fancy looking room, we've now got two options, right? We want to make sure that we don't blow up our base if this thing went haywire. And I suspect that, well, actually, no. In previous versions, I know that when an explosion occurred, the reactor pressure vessel main contained the explosion. So it didn't really do much by way of destroying outside this area. We also have it way down in the basement. So the question really becomes, do we want to have reinforced stone inside this area to help protect against blasts, right? Um, just in case I do something wrong with my reactor. It shouldn't explode, but that's the key word, isn't it? Shouldn't. Um, so we'll have to figure that out. Let me think about what I want to do. I could put reinforced stone on the other side of the marble, right? So like inside, like around the outside of this room, basically, quote unquote. Um, and that way it'll help contain the explosion if it does explode, but it'll destroy the stuff in the room. I don't know, we'll have to see. So I made a quick copy of my Let's Play World. And here's how we're gonna find out what happens when the reactor explodes. Because I remember in previous versions, uh, things would be cool. So I did clear up right up here above my reactor and area. So I guess what we can do, and now I'm in a test world, remember, so turning on cheats is allowed. There we go. Put uranium in there. We will clear out all this 
stuff, and we'll let the reactor explode, and we'll see what happens. Does that sound fun? I like it. Remember, this is a test world, so we should be fine. In theory. Ready? Uh, so, lever. We're going to activate you. So we can see core temperature rising. We're going to see what happens when this thing explodes. Yeah, I took critical damage, all right. Ah, that wasn't so bad. That wasn't bad at all. Nice. I like it. All right. That had zero impact on my on my on my base, which is fine, right? Like if something bad happens in that basement area, I'm not even going to be worried about it. So, let's save and quit back to title and we'll load back up. Let's play world. The real let's play world this time. So now I know that we don't have to worry so much about reinforced stone. So I'm not going to bother. I am not going to bother. What I'm going to do is get my marble paneling. You know, if I was uh, if I was more concerned, I would probably do something here. Uh, yeah, these guys will just do that. And I'm going to want some stone. You can go away. So let it be known that if you wanted to contain this explosion more, you could surround the thing in that reinforced stone, and that would help mitigate the damage to this room. But if this room is the only thing that's lost in the event of a reactor explosion, eh, I'll live. That's cool. Uh, so let's go ahead and put away this stuff, because we don't really need it now. And I'm going to get ready to make my uranium stuff. So we're going to need fuel rods. Fuel rods are created with iron plates inside a metal former. So let's go ahead and teach this thing how to do components of this build. So what we're going to want is come over here. Can we stop the rain? That would be great. Yeah, you stop rain. Uh, so fuel rod is that. So we're going to teach you. this. Cool. And then uranium fuel rods is just going to be, the other thing we need to teach it is uranium. Enriched uranium nuclear fuel. This stuff goes in up here. So let's test this. If I got a fuel rod, in fact, I'm going to want to test it over here in the basement area. So let's get that down here. One fuel rod plus one enriched fuel. Now remember, this is going to hurt, so, you know, earphone users, incoming loudness. But that should be that, right? So we can set this recipe up as such. Now, if we were being smart, we would probably have a, you know, thing on, but that's cool. And then our fuel rod is good to go. Nice. Put that away. Cool. Let's just, uh, that's easier. So what we'll do is we'll do fuel. I'm going to want another one of these. Start and start. Now, this might hurt a bit. Should I just get my armor on? I, I feel like that might not be a bad idea. Let's just do it real fast. Uh, suit. Hazmat suit. You. So we're going to need a bunch of orange dye. Mm. Mm. Ah, good. Ah, not so good. <laughs> not as good as one might have hoped. All right, so let's just do this. I don't suppose we have any of that. No, but we should have floral powder. We'll just get a bunch of it, and then we'll let the automation there be good. 
Will these two combine? If I can aim. Yes. There we go. So hazmat suit one, hazmat suit two, scuba one, and rubber boots check. Cool. So this will prevent damage when we're handling our uranium. See, no more dirt, 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 dirt. So I can come over here and teach this pattern, right? U plus U yields one of you. Cool. So we're gonna want a crafter, which I should have some of, and we'll probably want an importer. Armor stands, are those a thing? There, there's vanilla armor stands, but I don't think we have like the bibliocraft ones because it's not available just yet. No biggie. I hope I don't, oh, I do take damage. <laughs> You guys can go away, because I don't need you in my armor anymore. <laughs> I gotta be a little bit more careful about that. Uh, I feel like we should have another phantom face for this. Like, it just occurred to me my flight was bound to that armor I was wearing. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, right. Oh, dire. You derp so much sometimes. Uh, so my import bus might be done as soon as this phantom face is done. Shouldn't be long. Come on, buddy. And then we'll just bind this all phantom face it. There's no need to mix and match. So importer, cool. Uh, so we will phantom face you. We'll throw the importer on there. We'll saw this guy to this guy. We will remove our three by three because that is getting derpy of me. And then we'll set up this thing such that it's rotated and facing that way, cool. And we might even want some cabling. Cool, and then we put this in there, and now we should be able to request a fuel rod. Control shift click to request one even though we already have one. We hit start, and we should see this thing processing. Beautiful and it imports. Perfect, be right back. So the next thing we're gonna wanna do is take these uranium fuel rods and teach it how to make dual rods and quad rods. So let's go do that. In fact, we can just teleport home way faster like that. So we'll say quads and duals. Luckily that's pretty easy to craft, so we don't really have to do much there. Boom and boom. Cool. Back to the IC2 area. Whoosh. One of these days I'll actually use that elevator rail. See, for me, it's like, it's faster to teleport, but the elevator is so cool. So I have just, I struggle to find out good uses. All right, so we've got drums. Uh, I didn't want to put that in there. Um, we're going to want fluid conduiting. Pressurized fluid conduits, that works. We might want to go ender fluid conduit, but we'll see. Um, we're going to definitely want a lever to go on the redstone signal thingy. Uh, that should be cool. And up here in my IC2 area, I'm going to snag my coolant that I've got. Whoosh. So in theory, we should be good to go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up, um, well, we'll just stick with this pressurized fluid conduit for now. We'll do this and this, and we'll have... Uh, let's say hot comes out this side and cold goes in this side. So I'm going to configure on the down to auto extract and on the south to insert. And on the south, we're going to do extract and on the down will be insert. I'm just going to change this down to be extract only so that you go and this guy goes cool. So we can see now we've got IC2 coolant, 10 millibuckets worth, or 10 buckets worth in the reactor. Um, my reactor design had a specific setup. So I've gone ahead and crafted two quad fuel uraniums and two dual fuel uraniums. Uh, we're gonna want the quads here and the duals there. Now at this point, nothing is running. 
right? Right. Uh, when we activate this lever, it should turn on. It'll start drawing durability out of our uranium fuel rods. Our heat mitigation should engage and we should be cool. Should we give it a shot? On. Nice, we're producing hot coolant. Look at that, output. Wow, that's a lot of heat units. We're doing pretty good. Now you can see like some of our heat exchangers and heat vents, they're taking damage, that's fine. Um, that's not a problem. We should be cool with that. Everything's kind of doing its job and it's a nice stable reaction. So this shouldn't explode in theory. Kind of curious what'll happen when we run out of coolant though. So we're producing hot coolant and we're using up our cold coolant. That's great. That's cool. Now I'm going to eventually have some kind of system that can read whether or not there's cold coolant available inside the nuclear reactor. And if it's low, we will um, activate a redstone signal of some kind. There's multiple ways to do that, obviously, right? Um, so we'll want to, you know, play around with some options there. There's like fluid detectors and all that good stuff. Um, fluid monitor, I believe, for example, might be called liquid monitor. Yeah, this guy from RF Tools would probably be a good way to detect. And we could do something like, you know, if coolant is below 5,000, turn off the redstone signal, right? And if it's above 8,000, turn on the redstone signal. There's a couple different ways we can do it, right? So this thing should be okay now. So now our core temperature is rising. That's bad. We don't want core temperature to rise because if it does, uh, explosions occur, right? So here's the gist, right? If we don't have coolant in the reactor, core temperature starts to go up. And if core temperature goes up too high, kaboom, bad. So we gotta monitor that. Um, so we'll definitely wanna implement some kind of fail safe there. Um, but right now we should see our heat vents doing their job and venting out this excess heat. And with the reactor off, our temperature should start to go down at some point, I would expect. We'll see. So we'll be back in a minute here. I kind of want to let everything do its job and we'll be back and see if it completely cools off or not. All right, guys, what I'm going to do is make a couple reactor fluid ports. Hopefully I can pull this off. I think I can break you, right? We'll put these guys in here. That'll give me another one of those. Nice, boom and boom. So, whoa. Why were you hot all of a sudden? That makes no sense. Oh, I know why. <laughs> because when I broke that, <laughs> the reactor probably turned on. All right, that was close. <laughs> that was actually quite close. <laughs> oh boy, that was that was a little scary. Uh, good to know. So, whew. with that said, uh, we're okay here. It's cooling off. Uh, I can get my fluid monitors or my liquid monitors. That was almost bad. That was almost quite bad. So I'm thinking, let's do that, that, and a little bit of redstone. And I'm gonna configure you when hmm, you might not be able to directly measure the specific liquid I'm looking for. Yeah, so I'm thinking if there is, well, it shouldn't matter, but I'm thinking if there's hot coolant in there, that might not work out so well. Because it doesn't look like it can say only look at cold coolant, right? It's just saying if there's less than, you know, whatever amount, right? Less than, let's make it like 75, 80%. And this can be greater than, so let's make it less than 50 it turns off and greater than 85 it turns on that's pretty much what we would do the problem is filtering it for just cold coolant so let me see if there's another fluid monitor i can look at 
The other way, obviously, we could do it is, is with this, but I'd rather monitor the reactor directly rather than monitoring the drums. All right, guys, so as a quick test, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pop down a little bit more coolant in here. That should be cool. So at some point, this guy should flick off. Good. That's what I'd want to see. Nice. Are you running? I wouldn't think so. Yeah, you're not. Okay, cool. For a minute there, I was a little bit worried, but we're good. So this should be running now. Yeah, see? Well, I guess we'll see. That's not ideal. I want to make sure there's really no way this thing can explode. So I'm kind of curious if XNet might play kind of a neat role here. Um, what we could do is have a connector here, a connector here, um, and we should be able to say reactor. And I'm curious, uh, or we'll need a extra utils dude here just to give it power temporarily. Cool. Uh, let's make channel one a logic channel. And we will say, uh, we'll, we'll create a logic sensor, not on this dude, but on this dude. And we can say fluid sensor greater than, let's see what's in there at the moment. Uh, right now there's 7,000. So let's make it 8,000. That sound cool. 8,000. And I think I'm going to want to have, let's grab a bucket. I happen to have one right here. And I have my cold coolant. I'm just going to put this here for now. I think I can filter it, right? I think that's what that's for. We'll see. Output color white. That should be good. Um... That should be cool. And let's put a redstone dust dude. Not 100% sure how well this will work. Let's get a redstone lamp if we may actually. Call you lamp. And we'll make this guy output enable on color white. Redstone 15. That sound cool. Now if I set this guy to 7,000, it emits a redstone signal. Ha ha! Aha! That is awesome. Dude, that is cool. Uh, okay, cool. And then... 8,000 means it's off. Awesome. All right, cool. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it so that you monitor I should be able to set up a connector here. Why you no connect? Oh my goodness, I hate you so much. Can I? Uh, la, la, la. That is awful. Everything about that is not cool. That is super annoying. Oh, that was so close to being perfect. You see that? See how close that was? It doesn't connect to the redstone red port. I might be able to get you... I get you like that. You're going to be an output of 15, but only on white. And you're emitting white. 
if I just make it 800, you should be active. Cool. So I could put a redstone signal. I just have to move where the connector is, and then we should be good. That should be doable. Um, part of me wants to take these fuel rods out. Just to prevent any problems while I'm playing with stuff. Um, we're going to move... this thing. Why don't we put it Let's let's do this back here. Let's make this the fluid port. And remember this reactor might be running right now, quote unquote, but it's not actually running cuz there's no fuel in it. So that's okay. Right, uh, we'll put this dude here. We'll have our, this thing here. We'll have, I'm gonna try and make this look neat-ish, neat-ish. That connector there. And then unfortunately, well I could do this probably with a redstone conduit. Think this would work? Uh, Cause then I could facade it, right? That could be cool. Um, well, let's put, for now, we'll do this. I'm hoping this works, 50-50. So we'll call that redstone, we'll call this fluid, and that should be cool. Um, and then we'll just test whether this works, right? So on this guy, we're going to create a sensor again for fluid. We're going to say if it's greater than 800 and we want it to be U, output white. And on this, we're going to output only when white, a redstone signal of 15. Doesn't seem to be working. Why are you all of a sudden not working? What did I do to you? Let's delete this whole channel and recreate it. On channel two even. Not energy. Logic, create, create sensor. Oh, you know what? I don't think this can be in the corner. That's probably the problem. I'm almost certain that that can't be in the corner. That is more than likely the problem. Fluid. So I can delete you now. Let's go back to using this one. Logic create you are going to be this fluid white 800 greater than you, when white, output 15. Back in a minute once I figure out what's wrong with this. All right, I got it working, but I had to like make a new controller and I don't know why that's the case. And it makes me a little bit worried about this, but it's kind of working now. So we'll just have to cross our fingers that it stays working. So when it's greater than 800, it's emitting redstone signal. So what I'm probably going to want it to be is greater than, say, 5,000 emit a redstone signal, which means that it can power on. Um, now the question, of course, then becomes, can I use this? I can. Good. Right, so what I'm gonna do is put that redstone lamp right here so we can see it. And then if I make this connector here, this should turn on the reactor. 
and that should be good. So let's test this, and we're going to keep an eye on it. So I'm going to put away these things for the time being. We're going to get some uranium. I'm going to this guy over to... Uh, we'll hold off on this guy for the time being. Let's get our uranium fuel rods back. Cool. So this guy shouldn't be running right now, and it's not. But if we... Now you should be running. Nice. And our coolant's going down, so now our reactor should be off. Beautiful. That's what I want to see. That is cool. And if we put a little bit more coolant in there, once it goes above 5,000, it should turn on, start creating heat. And then once it drops below 5,000, it should turn off and stop creating heat. That's kind of neat. That is cool. And it's filtered to coolant, like the cold coolant, so we should be fine. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wrap up the episode. Uh, we will come back next time. That is pretty nifty. I like that. Uh, I'm just going to like fancy things up a little bit back there. Uh, we'll come back next time. That looks good enough for now. Uh, to figure out what our next steps are. So we basically have to now turn this hot coolant into power from IC2. So for now, Dowell20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.